for virtually 10 years and look exactly the same as the day it was packaged uh, to the day that you opened it. Uh, I feel like all of us need to sort of de-evolve a little bit and go back a little bit and, and understand sort of the complexity of food. Diseases today are rampant. I mean, we're the sickest we've ever been as a species. The cancer rate's one in two men, one in three women. We are plummeting as far as health goes. The New England Journal of Medicine just posted that this is going to be the first time in 200 years that we don't live as long as our parents. So, it's a way that all of us need to sort of sit back and really look what we're putting in our lives. I think for people as well as us, we've extended for generations' lifespan while sort of ignoring the quality, as long as you reach the finish line. Absolutely. It doesn't matter if you crawled there or were dragged by a wheelchair. Well, I got into I got into that with a doctor last week who's saying, you know, you have to admit that our pets are living longer. They're not actually living longer, they're living longer sick. I mean, if you really want to look at it, if you look back into the, into the 60s and 70s, uh, dogs used to live to be almost 30. A dog in Blue in Australia who lived in Kangaroo and Emu's whole life lived to be almost 30. Another dog in the United Kingdom that ate fresh food on a daily basis lived to be 29. But today the average lifespan of a dog is around 10 years. And we think that that's great, right? So, yes, these processed foods and these things that we could eat them, you're it, it, <laughs> it speeds the aging process, if you may. So what, what sort of diet do you recommend for, say, a big golden retriever? Yeah, well, you know what? A species appropriate diet. I mean, what they were designed to eat, uh, fresh foods, whole foods, uh, farm to table, ethically raised uh, meats. No kibble, no burritos. No, no Doritos, no kibble, no canned food, nothing that comes out of a package that can't rot. I mean, literally, if, if you put it, my grandmother would tell you, if you put it on the table and it doesn't spoil in three days, is it actually food? Um, things that, you know, that Mother Earth has sort of provided out there for us, uh, and fresh organic uh, vegetables, a complexity of, of fresh, whole, real foods. <laughs> I'm going to jump ahead to a different topic. Okay. Um, vaccinations we don't seem to be a, a big fan of for pets. Um, cats, I know you don't care one way or the other, but for dogs, vaccinations. I, wow. Yeah. <laughs> this is land based on ABC National News or that one. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, everybody, everybody should ship back to I'm a huge fan when it comes, I'm not a huge fan, but I do understand that, you know, how vaccines work. Um, what, I, what I've come to learn, because I'm not an expert in this division, but I get to work with a lot of experts like immunologists, Dr. Gene Cubs, is that we over-vaccinate. Yeah. How much is enough? I mean, reality is our pets in some of the places in the United States of America are vaccinating every six months. And we know today with data, with research, this is causing seizures, this is causing cancer, this is causing a whole host of problems. Unfortunately, again, there's a disconnect between the pet owner, uh, the veterinarian, and the pharmaceutical owner, who tells you it's okay to vaccinate all the time. Hey, man, if you could vaccinate every day, you would. But that's a huge, huge, huge problem. So what I'm trying to... I read one of their brochures, though, that tells you about it. Well, <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's super, super important, and it, it's such an important topic that people should really research and look into it on, on how long a vaccine actually lasts and other options like tighter testing, where you can test the level of immunity uh, for your pet versus having to over-vaccinate and cause a problem. Okay. I think we can ask another question. You got me on that one. Really? <laughs> All right. Uh, we're now coming to the third favorite uh, portion of the show. Okay. Questions from the audience. Not right. this audience, the virtual audience. Right. All right. I trust that I didn't drink it. Okay, all right. Uh, Andrew from Halifax, Hal Halifax asks, is there a food that you can feed your dog that will naturally help deter ticks? Wow. Um, you know... Uh, Just say yes and we can go to something. Yeah, there you go. Again. Just end it very quick. Yes. Uh, you Absolutely. Know, well, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, there is. Um, if you speak with a lot of people that, that feed their animals healthy, uh, fresh foods with a very strong immune system, um, now whether there's science behind this or not, um, normally fleas and ticks don't flock around them. I know, I know in the olden days they would put garlic and things like that into food to change the scent of the animal. Uh, but if you aren't feeding hypothetically, let's say, processed food, um, there's essential oils and herbal things that you can put on that bed to actually help. But uh, the best piece of advice I would give you, Andrew, is put that on something healthy, uh, something clean and strengthen your body. Uh, finally, a question from Greg in Ottawa. Rod, you must get lots of questions sent in from all over the world. Off the top of your head, what are the best and worst questions you've received? Not counting the choke. Wow. <laughs> That's a, that's a really good question. You actually stopped me on that one. I get, um, 
I get on average on social media, and I post that all the time, I get on average close to about a million questions a week, and some of them can be uh, way out in the left field, but you know, in my line of work, I think the craziest questions I would get is probably from um, the social media posts, because unfortunately you will build uh, a little hater category in there, so um, I think, I think uh, the craziest thing somebody ever asked me is, uh, when, when am I actually going to hurry up and die? So that would probably be the craziest question I got from uh, on social media. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, one fuzzy feeling and, 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 and Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Greg, yeah. Greg in Ottawa called you wrong yeah. because I'm sure it's a little song. Is that a lot? You can call me whatever you want. This is not crazy. Be respectful. Uh, all right. That's all I have. Any questions? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> hey, do you have a dog? I do. Really? What's your other name? Molly the Bad Dog. Molly the Bad Dog. What do you think about Paul since you now we're friends on Facebook and you follow me, brother? Uh, so it's all gone. Uh, all the wild. Alright, okay. Hopefully some of the better and bad stuff. Well, hopefully you, you start reading more and, oh, yeah. and, and we get more of something. Read them, of course. Oh, oh burrito. Oh, burrito. Got it. Organic. Alright, thank you for joining us today. Uh, please visit rodneyhabib.com to learn more about uh, looking after your dog properly in those postcards. Uh, follow us on social media for Facebook and a hundred other things. You can all get there to your website, I'm sure. I want to thank Kyle and the, uh, one of the folks here at Onyx for hosting us tonight. And to our uh, sponsor, Richard Brook, Yacht and Naval Architects. Uh, join us next time as Corey Poirier teaches me how to interview people. About time. Too bad you had to get that person. Anyway, we're meeting a big company.